Hi guys, I'm Melissa from cladmom.com. This is month 14 with your baby, also month 14 with my baby, Bracey, although his corrected age since he was born 10 weeks premature is 11 and a half months. So in some ways, he's a bit of a hybrid. The average 14 month old baby boy weighs 22 pounds, three ounces, which is 10.1 kilos. And the average baby girl weighs 20 pounds, seven ounces, which is 9.4 kilos. At his 14 month doctor's appointment, Bracey weighed about 9.1 kilos, which is 20 pounds. Bracey actually had not gained a ton of weight since the prior month, but the doctor said that was okay. While Bracey's height and weight held steady, he did move up the charts a bit for head circumference. What should my 14 month old be doing? Well, your 14 month old has developed the notion of object permanence. So they will have fun taking things into and out of a box. Many 14 month olds have started pointing and saying bye bye. Your 14 month old might be turning the books of a page on their own or frequently as is the case with Bracey, closing the book. One thing you can do is give them one book to read while you're reading another. That way they have something to play with, but you're able to continue to read to them. How much should my 14 month old be talking? Many 14 month old babies are saying a few words, some as many as six, and some babies have started to combine quite a few syllables. Reese is saying ma, 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 e be, be, be with a Spanish accent. The average 14 month old understands some basic directions such as get your shoes or no. I actually sleep trained all of my babies from day one. From day one, they went in the crib. When it was time for bed, they went to bed. If they kept crying, I went in to make sure they weren't still hungry or didn't need to burp. But I tried to make it really clear that the crib was for sleep and I tried not to come back right away all the time. This is like a personal preference thing. Some people are not comfortable letting their children cry at all. I noticed with Bracey that he cries for like a few minutes and if he's tired, he goes to sleep. If he's really, really not tired, then he'll cry and fuss and I know I just have like his nap or his sleep schedule off and I take him out of the crib. But it's worked pretty well until now and he is basically sleep trained. If you're having a lot of trouble with this, you might really want to consider changing your strategy. And I do think that the going in all the time and the checking and the checking is encouraging your kid to have that interaction with you. One interesting tip that somebody gave me, and this is like a funny thing and it's like really hard to execute, is that if it's the middle of the night and your child continues to get up, you might have to feed them, but you're actually supposed to remain very neutral with them. Don't get into jokes, kisses, games, don't smile, don't laugh. It's a very hard thing to do, but you don't want your child waking up so that they can interact with you. It really should be at this point just about making sure they get enough food or milk. Hopefully that being said though, by this point, your child is pretty much sleeping through the night. When it comes to intellectual activities, continue with all the things you've been doing in prior months. Play music, dance to music, play with blocks. Encourage your child to read books, to follow books. Walk around explaining everything in the house. Explain your clothes, explain the way the house works. Take your baby out as much as you can with you to the post office, to the grocery store. Just get them out in the world and try to keep a constant stream of words going their way. You can practice gestures a lot. Babies learn a lot through imitating, my doctor says. Waving, pointing, saying no bye-bye, hello. Reiterate the names of family members and people who are in your world. One thing that's also particularly great in my experience is to explain cause and effect. You know, I'm throwing the doll and now he's landing on the floor. I'm kicking the ball and now it's going over there. You know, I'm doing this one thing and it's leading to this other thing. That's great for developing your baby's sense of how the world works. Physical activities for a 14 month old baby. Practice walking. Hopefully your baby's either walking or you're down to one hand at this point and they might be twirling around you. Get them out as much as possible, out of the bouncer seat, out of the stroller, out of any sort of situation in which they're not really pushing themselves physically to get to the next level. And it's a lot of work for you because you're gonna be running around after your baby, but you just wanna be encouraging your baby to move around, to gain strength, to gain balance as much as you can. In terms of fine motor skills, Skills, playing with books, playing with blocks, and eating finger foods remain the best way for your baby to develop those fine motor skills, which ultimately lead to writing. 
One other thing, when you see your baby taking their shoes and socks off, that's good. It's really frustrating because you're walking around in like the dead of winter and your baby has bare feet, but that activity of pulling off the socks and undoing the Velcro and taking off the shoes is good for their fine motor skills. So don't discourage this either. Okay, schedules. I put these up every month. What I've started to do for your convenience and hop ahead in the video if this one doesn't pertain to you is to break them down into premature babies and full term babies because I'm still on a bit of a preemie schedule. Let me start with a breastfeeding schedule for a full term baby. A full term baby at this stage is having three meals, one to two snacks and is taking two long naps. Here's what the schedule should look like. 7 a.m. Breast milk, then multigrain cereal mixed with breast milk or formula. You can mix with soft fruits and give a healthy quantity by this point. Sleep from 9.30 to 11. 11 a.m. Breast milk, then finger foods from protein, such as fish, chicken, or meat, vegetable fruits, and yogurt and cheese. You can also give legumes, rice, pasta, and pieces of soft whole wheat toast with protein-based spreads. Sleep from 1.30 to 3. 3 p.m. breast milk, you can add soft fruit, cheese, or yogurt as a snack. And at 7 p.m., breast milk again, then finger foods from protein such as fish, chicken, or meat, vegetables, fruits, cheeses, and yogurt. You can also give legumes, rice, and pasta. And then it is time for night-night. Here's the schedule for a breastfeeding baby at 14 months who is premature, not sleeping through the night, or for whom you really want to maintain a more consistent input of food because you want to make sure they continue to gain weight. 7 a.m. Breast milk, then multigrain cereal mixed with breast milk or formula. You can add soft fruits. Baby sleeps from 9.30 to 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Breast milk, then finger foods from protein such as fish, chicken, or meat. Vegetables, fruits, cheeses, and yogurt are also great. You can also give legumes, rice, pasta, and pieces of soft toast with a protein-based spread. Then your baby will sleep from around 1.30 to 3. 3 p.m. breast milk, then soft finger foods, yogurt, or dairy-rich snacks. You can sleep from 6 to 7 p.m. And 7 p.m. breast milk, then finger foods from protein, such as fish, chicken, or meat, vegetables, fruits, cheeses, and yogurt. You can also give legumes, rice, or pasta. Bottle feeding a 14-month-old baby. If your baby's at a healthy weight, you can migrate to the three meals a day and two nap schedule. So take the schedule I'm about to lay out now, eliminate the third nap, and push dinner slightly earlier. If your baby was premature like mine, is a bit on the smaller side, or is not sleeping through the night, follow the schedule I'm gonna set forth here. 7 a.m., a bottle, then multigrain cereal. You can add soft fruits, then sleep from 9.30 to 11. 11 a.m., a bottle, then finger foods from protein, such as fish, chicken, or meat vegetable, fruits, cheeses, and yogurt. You can also give rice, pasta, and pieces of soft toast with protein-rich spreads. Sleep from 1.30 to 3. 3 p.m., a bottle, then soft, fresh fruits, cheese, or yogurt. Have your baby sleep from 6 to 7. Then 7 p.m., a bottle, then finger foods from protein, such as fish, chicken, or meat vegetable, fruits, cheeses, or yogurt. You can also give rice, pasta, and pieces of soft toast. Here is the Bracy update. Bracy has become a very experienced pointer. He points like this all the time for foods he wants. He points like this after breastfeeding sessions when he wants to read. He points at people he wants to pick him up. It's his new thing and it's just so cute. He started saying mama and bebe, although not necessarily while looking at me in the case of mama, but I'll take it. He is cruising a lot, walking along furniture, walking along you know, the sofa and using everything he can. And he's really getting better at walking. We're trying to walk with him as much as possible. He's also really eating a lot more regular foods. He wants more robust meals. I'm giving him a ton of finger foods. We're still giving some soupy, chunky like purees, but he's starting to migrate more to variations of the food that we're actually eating as a family. Although I make sure that it's really, really small and soft in terms of the consistency. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you back next month for month 15.